So how are you feeling about just introducing yourself, a little bit about your um, history at the Electric Public Library or it, working in libraries in Texas? Um, okay. And then, you know, I got, you can see my questions. Um, I just wanted to know a little bit about the town. And in particular, you might emphasize um, since this is related to internet, do you know how many different vendors or carriers you might have? Just an approximation that are available in the community. Okay. Um, generally, at, if you live in that community, what kind of speed do you have at home? Right. Those kinds, that's, so it's not, um, it is the people, and that's why we're all here, because we're interested in having the people have faster internet at the library. But this particular group is going to be more focused on those kinds of numbers, I think. Um, oh, we can prompt you with that. Yeah. So we can, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and say, okay. Who are, where are you from? Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Stacy Nelson. I'm from Electra, Texas. I am the library director for the Electra Public Library. I've been here since 2012. Uh, before coming to work here, I worked for our school system as a school librarian from 2004 until 2012. So um, I don't have a master's in library science because of the population. We're not required to have that here to run the library. So uh, I'm always trying to learn new things and and keep myself up to date on what we need to be doing so that our library can continue to grow. Um, I was hired for this job because I embrace technology and I have a, a desire for our youth here in town and um, I also get along with our older patrons but um, my That's heart good. really <laughs> lies with the kids. So is that good? And then you can just prompt her with anything. Okay, so then pri some just some background about the public library there. Prior okay. to your uh, participation in the Libraries Connecting Texas, which is the program that we're going to be highlighting uh, with right. you today, yes. um, what was the internet speed in the library? Uh, when I first took over, that we were uh, wired in with our telephone company, and they were just starting to um, explore the internet services. So our speed was really slow. It was a dial-up internet, and so um, I think a year after I got here, we switched to like satellite providers, and in Electra we have like four different companies that can connect you with satellite um, internet. Um, now that our, our phone company just got purchased by a more uh, technologically savvy company, so they're starting to install fiber here in town, but uh, it wasn't available when we went through the Library Connecting to Texas program. Um, okay. The highest speed that we could get was uh, six megabytes per second uh, download and two megabytes per second upload. That is uh, the only speed that we could really function at. A lot of the providers here in town are not as dependable, so we went with the one that was the best suited for our speed. Because of how slow our speed was, we really didn't have that much uh, computer traffic because people just got tired of sitting there waiting for it to load. Um, Did so you offer Wi-Fi to the yes. community? Yes, we had uh, Wi-Fi um, that was available 24-7. I mean, they could pull up outside the library and access it if you know, weather permitting, you know how satellite internet is. If you've got clouds in the sky, your internet's not gonna be all that great. So we were having to run the library on that speed as well through our circulation computers and, and all of that. So with us being on there and other people being on there, it would slow the speed down so much that even our circulation computers would time out. 
So it was really, really uh, a hectic thing to have to deal with day in and day out. Our school system, and I work, my IT person is uh, also full-time for the school as an IT person. And I was, uh, I worked with them when I worked for the school system. So they brought the fiber lines in to help their speed. And then they brought it to my attention. And then the state library brought this program to all of our attentions and I immediately jumped on it. Um, I asked my city manager if I could have permission to do this and they told me that that was fine as long as when that first year was up because they helped pay for that extra uh, 20%. Once that was up, I would have to find a different way to fund paying for that 20% that was our responsibility. So it our friends- the library uh, Connect Texas that paid for the one year? Yes, yeah. yes. And that was a yeah. million dollars, I believe, that they um, provided um, a, for libraries across the state. Right, right. Yeah. And okay. uh, when, you're, when you're doing all of that and you have such a low speed, then uh, the consultants that the state library provided uh, helped to write into my application, you know, or the thing for the companies to bid to bring their service to our library. They helped write in, you know, the extra equipment that those companies would provide, you know, free of charge because they were bringing their services to us. And so that was really helpful because I had no idea that it was going to require so much update on servers and um, all kinds of, you know, I can't think. All the so it's the library infrastructure that you're talking right. about within yes. the library. You had to do some things in order to be able to uh, work with that type of a speed that you were going to be receiving. That's correct. Because it, the higher the speed, the more it would uh, put it would put on the system we already had and our system could not support that speed. So it would have burned it up, right. you know, so we had to think about that. And then um, the company that I went with said that if I signed up for a three year agreement, they would not charge me for the installation of mm -hmm. the fiber. So that saved us money that way. And, you know, was, you can go ahead. Was that a unique deal? Did each one of you know about the other libraries participating? Did each one kind of come up with whatever fit their needs um, across the state when they were doing that? Do you know? Yes, I, I would think that all the the consulting company that the state library provided us with uh, would come in and ask you uh, different questions and then, uh, you know, help you to put what you needed into your application for E-rate. And so in that experience, um, as far as within the library, uh, were you the sole person that communicated with them or did you have um, people, board members or other community members come in and uh, provide you with some thoughts about what was needed or? You know, no, I, I I presented it to my library board, but they're only an advisory board. Okay. So the only one that I really had to get permission from was our city administrator, because he is mm -hmm. my boss. So, okay. um, and he oversees all of our uh, financial needs. So. Did you then, so you had not applied for E-rate prior to uh, ever in the past prior to doing uh, signing up to work with this um, project right I okay. had I had started doing the edge program that our state library uh, mm -hmm. provides so that they can help you you know develop a plan to update your technology and things like you know you go through different webinars and you they input you know set different goals for you to achieve a little bit at a time so that you can eventually get up to where you're, you know, the speed that 
we should all be at, but we just don't have the funds for, you mm -hmm. know. So um, I was going through that, but mm -hmm. I had always heard how difficult it was to apply for E-rate. So I was a little <laughs> apprehensive about that. Well, yeah, we, we have heard that and, and we're, we're we, we, I'm sure for some it may be, but uh, I think that uh, it sounds to me like you had a, a positive experience working with the consultants. Uh, do you feel yeah. comfortable? Do you feel more knowledgeable about E-rate, or what's the what's your your take back from that situation after you completed it? Well, I feel more comfortable. Um, I like the fact that uh, we do um, not really webinars; they're conference calls or and stuff and then they record them so that I can go back and and rewatch them on different things that are going on as we're progressing through this program. So the state library does that for us. We have an agenda and we uh, do these like once a month. And so um, those are really educational on getting you a little bit more familiar with uh, the different websites and and how to do a lot of different things how to submit and all that so i'm still learning a great deal i'm not nowhere knowledgeable yet and this but program became available in 2017 was that the date that it was um offered uh it let's see the first let me think the first year that we were financed for it was 2018 to 2019, I, I want to say. And now right. we're funded for 2019, 2020. Right. And I can't, I know you mentioned to me when we talked on the phone, but you talked about the, the issue of being able to find the additional funding. And maybe I missed it. Maybe you already mentioned it uh, was you went to your friends of uh, the yeah. library. Yes, we had a gentleman here in town that left a million dollar trust to the library and through the friends group, they get to decide it's meant for the children. Anything mm -hmm. that we could use it that will benefit our kids, then that is what it's to be used for. Not to handle our, our budget needs or anything like that, but you know, um, having a higher internet speed provides our kids with more benefits for, you know, like if they didn't get their homework and stuff done at school, which our school system really tries to do, that they can come here and, you know, finish working on uh, papers or download uh, pictures or whatever it is they need to do. So, um, we... You, I went to the friends group and I told them that our 20% that we would be responsible for was just a little bit over what I was paying with their approval for the eight megabytes per second of internet that we were getting through a satellite TV, uh, satellite uh, provider. So, I mean, it was like, maybe a couple hundred dollars more a year to have a hundred megabytes of speed. So they were all on board for that. So that great. So that's what we we're meeting together um, at our committee meeting here. And we're recording this ahead of time is to talk about the homework gap. Um, comparing the before and after of when you introduced the hundred megabit per second in the library, do you see an increased number of students coming in? Um, or have you done anything in the community to advertise that this could be a spot to come to do your homework? Uh, I put it in our, I, am a, I do a weekly newspaper article. So I put it in there. I've put it on our web page. I've put it in our Facebook page. Uh, anywhere I can make use of it. But yes, uh, we, when we were in the lower speeds, we had no one here after school or anything uh, because it was just way too slow. All this summer, especially, uh, we have 15 computers in the library that are for public use. And um, 
we have four laptops and then 11 computers and they're all have someone on them all day long oh, so yeah and so my question would be also do you do you have um it's interesting because you're you're basically you're saying you, you're kind of you're you're kind of like um very rural because you're using satellite only for you had been for a long time do you um have a lot of people in the rural areas outside of your community that have no internet at all families or ranches or yes we do we have so, some that have no way to get internet way out where they are right unless I, I mean there might be one company that provides that but it's so outrageously priced they can't afford it right so, uh, and we uh, leave our wi-fi on all the time even when we're not open so that people can pull up in the parking lot and still be able to access the internet if they need it. That's great. So then also, do you have, um, have you increased your programming? Just, I know that we're talking about the homework gap, but do you find ways to collaborate with the school? Do you offer uh, virtual field trips or anything along that line now? Some things that are different because you have that speed and you also have that number of, um, patrons that are younger that are in the library? Uh, no, because the, the school system had the this internet provider before me. So they already have the speed up there to do the virtual field trips and things like that. So um, I haven't done that. I do want to develop, you know, like the coding um, programs for the older it's just trying in in a rural community like this your your students are involved in every single activity in school because there's so few of them to cover everything so trying to find a day or an a time that they are not busy when the school is up and going is is really hard i'm trying to develop a youth advisory council so that they can kind of help me you know, decide what kind of programs would pull uh, students in here and, and things like that. So I think this next school year, we're just going to have to do some experimenting and see what days we get the better response from. Okay. So I did ask you this question before, but I was, um, and I don't know that um, on the phone, but we were talking about, you said that the school and the library connected with, were a connection with fiber and that you do have other fiber connections to businesses in the community. And I just wondered if, um, if you had any possibility of sharing that connection between the school and the library as far as just fiber into town with other businesses. And I can't, I don't think that you were aware of anything at this point in time. Yeah, our uh, our hospital here in town is the only other one that they have uh, connected the fiber to. So, um, and when you, you file know, for e rate, you uh, when they file for e rate, are they filing for the school and the library together, this uh, consulting group, or are you a separate entity as a library only? I'm a separate entity. Okay. Yeah, uh, the school does not have uh, accessibility to the the consultants that I do, or at least they don't take advantage of it if they do. Because even mm -hmm. when I was at the school system, I didn't have any clue about the state library and what it could offer. Uh, we had a you know a librarian with the masters in library science at the school system and. She wasn't a part of the state library system, so that was all a learning process when I took this over. Uh huh. Well, do either one of you have any additional questions that you would like to ask, Stacy? Mm -hmm. And so, Stacy, do you have some additional comments that might be helpful for? Um, okay. You, when I'm talking about the like the fiber line, our hundred one hundred megabytes is dedicated just to us like when you're on a satellite provider or something like that the more people that are on it the more the speed pulls down through the whole town so that you know 
only the people that are accessing the internet here in the library affect our speed. Do you know what I'm I'm trying to? Yes. So to me that that is uh, kind of beneficial and. Um, but yeah, you need to know your uh, what your system requirements can handle, and if you're going to have to update any of that. And you know, I about drove my IT guy crazy trying to get all the answers <laughs> to the questions. I don't think you're probably re unique in that related to this program. I just wondered also, do you happen to have a number? I, you talked about you have your your uh, meetings, uh, monthly meetings, or et cetera, about this project, I think. Do you know how many other libraries, public libraries in the state took advantage of this? Um, I could look that up for you and email you because they just told me, I want to say it's close to 30 libraries have been funded through the E-rate. Now, how many took advantage of the program that I was a part of or still am a part of? I, I honestly couldn't tell you that, but I could find out for you. Well, that would be great. We could report on it. Yeah, because I told you to con uh, contact Henry Stokes, but he's out on vacation till I think August 1st. I, so. I actually visited with him. I didn't update you on Friday. I had a great conversation with him. So I've put some word oh. in for you that you were you had agreed to have this conversation with me. <laughs> so oh, okay. you need bonus points yeah. along the way. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we were pointed out maybe if you could give us just we should have started with this a little highlights on the population itself the of Electra. Yeah, uh, Electra is a population of right around 2,800 people. We're halfway in between Oklahoma City and Dallas. I mean, we're just a little kind of blip in the road, but we're exactly halfway in between both those. <laughs> So we're close to Wichita Falls, Texas, if you're familiar. Right. So Wichita. are you looking for like, um, um, what, uh, is there a business there, manufacturer? Uh, our hospital is our largest uh, provider. We were an oil boom town, you know, and then when the oil took a hit, so did our little town. So we've, we went down considerably from when my husband and I went to school here. So um, considerable drop in population. But a lot of people that live here, they uh, commute back and forth to like Wichita Falls or to Vernon, Texas and, and work. It's cheaper oh, wow. to live here than, you know, you can get like a three bedroom, two bath house here for about $80,000. Right. So, is so it, how many school districts um, would you say the library serves? Um, is there just, just one? Yeah, we just serve one. I mean, okay. if, if people from Iowa Park want to come over, they're only like uh, 15 miles outside of Electra. If people in Iowa Park want to come over and get a card, we kind of let them do that. And mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty laid back. So um, we like to be helpful in any way that we can. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time. I think